All right. You ready? <clears throat> ready to do this? Yeah. Hells yeah. Leadhead of the male and female persuasion, we are back. However you identify, <laughs> it doesn't matter to us. As long as you're pro two A and love you. and love the Constitution, and love America, and hate communism, you're uh, you're one of us. Welcome back to the Talking Lead Podcast. This is a good one because uh, we've got our funny, talented, and intelligent co-host Chad Enos with Caltech joining us. Today. And that is the funny part. And Chad is in space <laughs> right now. And it's funny, yep. funny that you're broadcasting from your spaceship. Uh, you must be a, a part of that I'm NASA cha- mission. I am. I'm chasing around a, a big asteroid right now. <laughs> a big ass asteroid? <laughs> right, yeah, Kel- Keltec's going to be the first to uh, shoot a shotgun on that asteroid. And you're going to mine some of the materials and start making bullets from that, right? You have your own line That's, of asteroid how, how, bullets. How, how do you think we get that moon dust back to uh, Cape Canaveral? That's why you guys are located there in uh, in uh, where are you located? <laughs> I just drew a blank. Brevard County. No, what's the town? It's my favorite. It's Cocoa Beach. Oh, uh, uh, Cocoa. Yeah, Cocoa Beach. My favorite place. Yeah. I love Close Cocoa enough. Beach. Yeah, seriously though, that's like that's like my top five places in the entire world. Cocoa Beach is one of those. Really? Well, yeah. we haven't seen you here. Well, I haven't been in a while. It's one of those things where I don't want to wear it out, you know? It's a treat when I get to go. <laughs> <laughs> Mom down. All right. I may have to do that, especially after some things we talked about off air there. I definitely need to come down. So check some stuff yeah, out. Man. But as I had mentioned in episodes sure. earlier, uh, we've got Chad on, and we're going to be talking about the Sub-2000 CQB, which uh, I guess officially yes. you guys have launched that now, even though... You, uh, you've been teasing about it for a while. At last SHOT Show, you had it there, and we talked about it a little bit. But Chad's going to talk details about that with us today, among other things. Yes, sir. But if you didn't have an opportunity yet, if you've not gone back to the last episode, make sure you go back where we had the League of Pirates and Occam Defense Solutions on, and we continued our Liberty series. And uh, this one we focused on self-ownership, self-determination, and individual responsibility. That was a really good show. Yeah, and uh, getting yourself prepared in the wake of this political hurricane that's about to touch down and wreak havoc. So how are you guys preparing there in uh, Cocoa Beach for this presidential onslaught? Um, All the preparations were done about nine years ago. (laughs) (laughs) True to form, you know, a real prepper. Yeah. We're good. Uh, As far as the company goes... um, the only thing we're focused on right now is production, uh, as usual, because uh, when times like this happen, as you know, uh, it becomes a seller's market, and uh, you know buyers are having a hard time finding products. So we're doing everything we can to up our production, stay on top of things, you know, run three 24-hour shifts, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So we're busy. I mean, you're even launching shuttles to space with you in it to get more materials. To build weapons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're you're making uh, awesome discoveries. We're innovative here. You know that. That's right. You, you are the company of innovation. That's one of the reasons why we love you. Always innovating. We're and expanding. We need a place to put our you know more machines and people. <laughs> <laughs> so you're looking for that asteroid, uh, Rex, R-E-X asteroid. <laughs> which we're going to talk about that coming up mm-hmm. a little bit. Um, but yeah, if you didn't get a chance, make sure you go to, to last episode. And then uh, we've got some upcoming episodes that I want to tell you guys about that you're going to want to definitely not miss. I'm going to be doing like a book series coming up, Chad, where I'm going to have several authors on. And uh, to kick that uh, series off, let me find who it is. It is going to be... So we're going to have Dr. Jack Schaefer and... I don't know if any of you are familiar with him or not, but he was a former FBI agent, and his specialty was 
getting the truth out of people. So interrogating, uh, getting the truth out, finding out when people were lying, uh, that kind of stuff. So he's written a couple of books, and we're going to have him on, maybe give us some tips and tricks. Uh, he looks like a, a retired keyboard player from an 80s new wave band. <laughs> Uh, I was going to say he, he looked like um, the weird science guy who sang weird science. <laughs> He's kind of, kind of a, kind of a scientist. He is. He is. So uh, he's an ex FBI agent and he wrote a book uh, called the truth detector. And uh, he goes through and, and talks about different techniques that the FBI uses uh, body language, facial tics, you know, voice inflections, things like that on how to uh, tell whether somebody's lying or not, and then also how to get the truth out of them. So that's going to be a very good interview with Jack Schaefer. How did you find and book him? How do, how do you find him? So That's a really cool interview. So I've got an in with Simon and & Schuster, and they're the people who, who did uh, Jack Carr's books, series of books. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I had Jack yeah. Carr on okay. uh, several episodes ago. I had Clint Emerson on. So whenever he's got somebody that's kind of in our wheelhouse, he'll contact me and let me know. Oh, uh, that's cool. So another guy that we've got coming is Kyle Mills, who has taken over the uh, Vince Flynn novels. Uh, Vince passed away a couple of years ago, and then Kyle Mills took him over. But it's kind of a espionage um type Jack Carr kind of kind of books and there's a whole slew of those books out they've been they've been out for years uh, and the new one is called Total Power it's gonna be coming out September 15th I haven't read any of those books yet so I'll have to get into the Vince Flynn series too I've been reading the Jack Carr because you can't because I can't read oh. I, I read slow <laughs> so I'm just now two into the uh, Jack Carr where I think he's got four out now but uh, they're good reads, man. If you haven't had an opportunity, you should uh, check those out. Have you well, heard? Have as soon you, as I finish the Derek Zoolander school for kids that can't read good, then I'll <laughs> read good and stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, see, Kyle's father was an FBI agent. He, so he's got some background with the FBI as well. So I got a little theme going on with the FBI. And then coming up soon after that, I just found out this other guy. Lieutenant, Lieutenant Dan, <laughs> uh, Lieutenant Colonel Dan Rooney, uh, he's got a book coming out. It's called Fly Into the Wind, and it comes out November the 17th, and Fox Nation uh, is going to do a show about it, and its first episode is going to air November the 10th, and it's called Fly Into the Wind. So we're going to get uh, Lieutenant Colonel Dan Rooney on to talk about that, and uh, he's a How former— How many times do you think he's heard that? Lieutenant Dan. Lieutenant I'm, Dan. You know I'm going to say that when he comes on, too. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to be like, that's cute. That's yeah. new. Why don't he'll, you come up with something original? He'll hang up. But he looks like he's a pretty pretty fun guy. <laughs> he's a fighter pilot. He's got three combat tours in Iraq. He's a PGA professional. Wow. Really? Yeah. And he's the founder of Folds of Honor Foundation, uh, which has raised more than $135 million and awarded more than 28,000 scholarships to family members of fallen and disabled soldiers. That's awesome. So he's not motivated is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, he's, he's lazy. That's who we like to get on the show. We like to get lazy people on the show. But uh, a whole That's slew awesome. of cool interviews coming up. Kind of kind of biding our time until the AK Corner comes back the first of next year. So we wrapped that up a couple of months Bert. ago. Or actually, I think it was last month. And uh, in the meantime... You know, to get your AK Corner fix, go back and listen to the prior episodes, get caught up. Uh, and then you can also go to factory47.com where we started a new line of t-shirts, hoodies, and tumblers for you lead heads that have the uh, AK Corner logo on there. Uh, and it's two-sided print. And on the back, we've got some, some of the cooler uh, factory markings from AKs from around the world on the back of that hoodie and the t-shirts. And we've got the women's cut t-shirts now. Chad, so something for all the lead heads. <laughs> Are you suggesting that I would wear a woman's cut T-shirt? Well, I mean, your physique, you know, you, you could get like a double X large. Chad's been working out hard. One for my sister. So what do you what have you been doing? <laughs> um, just like you put on another three or four pounds of muscle. Um, eating a lot of uh, 
Um, cliff bars. Of <laughs> cliff bars, because <laughs> those are known yeah. to really rip you up. <laughs> oh, they do. Yeah, that's my secret. Yeah, <laughs> it's cliff bars. That's it. Um, no, I actually haven't been to the gym in. Uh, it's been about a week and a half. I had a little uh, little procedure. Had a a big old lump taken on my chest. Oh damn, son! You were getting too big. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, it was not. Um, it was. What is it? Benign. It was benign. So it was nothing. But uh, it was just bothering me. It's been been there for a couple of years. So I just finally went and got it taken out. Is your twin brother? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, we're Sorry glad talking to me. It kind of freaked me out. Right. Yeah. Well, we're glad you're okay. I uh, didn't know anything about that. I figured it was just probably because you were oh, concentrating yeah. too much on that peck, you know, and you're <laughs> on the peck. It machine. started growing its own peck, right? It was so big, it had to start another one. <laughs> <laughs> the Fiocchi family has been producing high-quality ammunition since 1876. In 2020, Fiocchi is launching a full line of premium products, everything from self and home defense to the long-range categories. The Fiocchi Blue Guardian line will feature specially tuned products specifically for home and self-defense, featuring lead-free technology and the only NATO-certified zero-pollution primer in the world. Fiocchi is a proud sponsor of the Talking Lead Podcast and the Leadhead Brigade. Fiocchi trains, Fiocchi protects. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah. So now, so that, now that I've got your attention, uh, I hear the jack wagon train rolling in. So let's take care of some jack wagons, uh-huh. and then we're going to talk sub CQB with Chad. Hey, Ralph, Semper Fi, do or die, hold them high at 8th and I. It is time for the talking lead jack wagon of the week, so brace yourself, baby. So the train yeah. has station, Chad, and we've got, we've got a few jack wagons. I don't know if it's the COVID or or the election or what, but you, you lead heads have slacked. You haven't sent me any uh, jack wagon nominations or uh, lead head hero brigade, brigade um, nominations. So talking lead at gmail.com. I want to see those. I want to hear your nominations for jack wagons uh, and think outside the box, go outside the, the normal, you know, political easy targets, you know, find us something new and interesting on the jack wagons. And then of course our heroes, uh, you guys typically do a really good job on those, so keep those coming in. So let's start off with a uh, follow-up from our last jack wagon where we talked about the ATF um, and you know, their ruling on the Q Honey Badger, saying that, that mm. that's not a pistol, that they consider it to be an SBR. So I've got a, a news here from The Truth About Guns. I hate it when they bury the lead. Uh. Uh, let's see. ATF suspends Honey Badger cease and desist letter amid White House investigation. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives has backtracked on its cease and desist letter to Q regarding the Honey Badger AR pistol. The suspension of the cease and desist is for 60 days unless withdrawn or suspended by the ATF. The reason for this suspension is unknown. Well, because it was illegal and unconstitutional, for one. <laughs> but... Yep. It comes shortly after the report of White House investigating the ATF's decision. However, most people seem to believe that it's political move. It's a political move. A 60-day suspension would presumably place the cease and desist into effect well after the presidential election and after any of the country's attention has been uh, captured by the inevitable election court battle to follow, leaving the ATF to operate in the shadows. And it says, according to Amoland, senior ATF officials believe that a Biden administration would give them sufficient political support to ban the possession and use of all AR pistol braces, which is what they tried doing in 2017, as re- recently as this past summer. Ultimately, it's all up in the air with the presidency uh, potentially changing this election cycle. AR pistols may become NFA-regulated items, if not banned entirely under a new assault weapons ban. So there you go. There's an update on our report from last week on the uh, the Q Honey Badger. So it looks like the ATF once again is uh, backtracking on their decisions. So Caltech doesn't. You don't. You guys don't do any braced um, firearms, do you? We don't. Uh, well, I mean, we the um, I have one that's braced, CC- but you guys don't specifically market a braced. Right. Yeah, I was going to clarify that. Yeah, we yeah. we tend to leave that up to the uh, aftermarket. So, but yeah, we do have firearms that you can brace. Yeah, and I've um, got one, the and, um, uh, PLR 
16. The PLR 16, the the CMR 30, or sorry, the uh, CP 33 is another good one. Yeah. Uh, if you haven't seen it, uh, Eric and Chad or Iraq Vet put together. I think they called it a, a Redneck MP7 or something. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It's uh, it's it's awesome though the way they have it set up. But yeah, so we typically leave that, um, you know, to the uh, aftermarket to come up with. Uh, those sort of ideas because we want to focus on production of the actual guns and getting those out. And if we were making uh, those type of accessories, we would uh, be spending, you know, manpower and machines uh, building accessories when we could be building gun parts. So, and it gives an opportunity for, you know, the aftermarket to, um, you know, start their own business or add to their production line and hire people. So yeah, it's always a good thing. Yeah. There you go. So uh, to come, more to come on the, the ATF's decision there, obviously. Uh, but they put a cease and desist up until, uh, I think I said, just 60 days. Give them 60 days. So we'll see what happens after the election. You know, you know what the a- ATF could do? They, they could not backpedal on all this stuff and then just stop with the nonsense. You know what would be even better? Place. Defund the ATF. <laughs> yeah. Get, get, get rid, rid of the, of the ATF. NFA for sure. Yeah, repeal the NFA, then we wouldn't need the ATF for the most yep. part. So you've got a jack wagon. You got it. I do. Are you cleaning house or something? I mean, <laughs> what's your... No, I got to plug in my laptop because I'm dying over here. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Get get you some juice on um, there. Your background's killing yeah, me, dude. I love yeah. it. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Come on. You like my spaceship, and you know it. Wait, I got to take a screenshot of this. Let me do a screenshot. Take snapshot. Perfect. Wait. I'll give you a better one. You know, <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> it disappeared into your background. <laughs> the gun does. Yeah, all you see is like. Uh, oh, weird! Now you're gone, dude. That's so weird. <laughs> they got to back up. Doing that. They got to back up further. There, that'll work. They do that one. Take that screen. No, it's still disappearing. One more. Do one more. Perfect. <laughs> so. <laughs> No, we're done taking selfies. Let's let's get to Chad's jack wagon. Okay, so my jack wagon is um, a couple Florida people uh, reloading ammo. It looks like in their own house. Uh, they, I don't know what they were doing. It doesn't really say, but they uh, caught their house on fire. And I'm not even mad necessarily that they did that. What I'm mad about is that they wasted so much ammo in a time like this. Right. So it says two people so have been hospitalized. Yeah, read that. Yeah. They're reloading ammo and all their all their powder, primer, and everything burned up in their house. <laughs> so, I mean, that's like gold these days. You know it is like gold. And, you know, the first comment was, you know, both these halfwits are Trump voting Republicans. <laughs> and <laughs> the guy's right. I'm sure they were, you know, pro-gun, pro-ammo, obviously. Uh, and it's stuff like that, you know. That uh, you know just makes us uh, gun owners look bad, you know. Well, accidents happen. Be careful. You know, you know accidents do. They happen. do. They do happen. It's, it's and we obviously don't know the details of this. It could have been anything uh, yeah. that started that fire. It could have been an electrical outlet or something that. I mean, it could have been their meth you know. lab that caught fire, not their ammo. <laughs> it's, exactly. <laughs> so. <laughs> but yeah, definitely, but, um, you reloaders, be careful. And these two were hospitalized for burns, uh, suffer, suffered after touching off a fire, apparently while loading. It says apparently while loading ammunition in the Venice, uh, Florida home. That's what they're saying anyway. So it, I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if it turned out to be mail. I, I mean, there's so many, there's so many, you know, so many um, variables here. Like, I mean, in my mind, I just picture some FUD, you know, reloading 45 ACP with a cigarette dangling off his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, you pick your own scenario. That's mine. <laughs> right. Write your meme. Write your own meme. Definitely. Is it did say that there were um, bottles of oxygen in the house, which fortunately did not go up in flames and explode. Oh, my God. And there was another chemical, uh, acetylene, uh, which apparently All didn't blow up either. So uh, flammable type materials. Yeah. Yeah. Could have been. Could have been much worse, and I hope these people are okay. But yeah, ten thousand rounds of ammunition got burned up. I mean, that's the sad news here. That's that's what we need to focus on. Yeah, exactly. Oh, boneheads! 
All right, so the next one, uh, yeah. this comes from, uh, from California. It says, experts, in finger quotes, surprised and horrified California's buying guns for the same reason everyone else does. <laughs> the two most common reasons for recent firearm acquisition, according to the report, was lawlessness and the early releases of people from California prisons. <laughs> wow. Says the survey found that the fear of being attacked in one's neighborhood was a prime driver of gun owners among those who got a gun due to the pandemic and its fallout. Nearly 70% of respondents said they were most concerned about robbery, and 50% said their fears stem from police violence. <laughs> The social upheaval wow. and large-scale protest over police killings and racial violence have also fueled some of the fears survey takers described. Uh, here's a quote here. It says, I'm concerned like I've never been before, said Dr. Rochelle Dicker. <laughs> pause. <laughs> I'm going to leave that one alone. Comedy pause there. A UCLA <laughs> trauma surgeon in response to the report. <laughs> Americans have a culture of turning to firearms for protection, and now like never before... People are fearing for their own safety and financial security. We're seeing that manifested in California. So there you well, go. The good news is, good news is a whole bunch of whole bunch of people uh, understood what the Second Amendment's for overnight. Yeah, absolutely. So that leads us to our last jack wagon. Actually, it's a jack wagon hero kind of rolled into into one story here, uh, on the same vein as to why these people in California are buying. Their guns. This is in Des Moines, Iowa. Robbery victim shoots two in self-defense. One dead. Wait, Robert Rectum? Robert Rectum. Who did you say it was? Robbery victim. Oh, robbery victim. I thought you said Robert Rectum. <laughs> Robert Rectum, yeah. Like, damn near killed him. I think he's that, uh, <laughs> that uh, doctor's husband. So, Des Moines, <laughs> Iowa. The Des Moines Police Department said a robbery victim acted in justifiable self-defense when he shot two people early Monday morning on the city's north side. The robbery victim called police and told them he had been approached by two armed men who attempted to rob him, but in self-defense he shot them. Let's see. The victim is a concealed weapon permit holder. Police didn't re release the names of the people he shot, which who cares. So there you go. You know, all the reasons why the Californians want to, Californians want to have guns now to protect themselves for instances just like yep. this. And it works. <laughs> nice segue. It works. So what about it heroes? Does. Have you I mean, got, have you got any heroes? Anybody yeah, a bunch wanna, of heroes. You want to nominate that stands out as doing something exceptionally well in our community for our fellow man, woman, child? Um, yeah. Uh, talking Lead. Marty from Talking Lead. <laughs> Marty from Talking Lead. <laughs> there you go. I'm just gonna say it. I'll take that nomination. I'm not. I'm not, you know, I'll take I'm not that. ashamed. I'll take that. You're on here every week doing a podcast, bringing the people in, bringing the people together. Just, it's just one thing. big community, one big happy community here at the uh, lead quarters in the Leadhead Brigade. Hell yeah! So my hero is NASA. There you go. I love, I love NASA. You know, when I grew <laughs> up, I probably mentioned this before. I wanted to be an astronaut. That was like my dream, but uh, it didn't happen. And I became a podcaster. Well, you landed a little. <laughs> you landed a little. <laughs> I became a podcaster. <laughs> you landed a little too far north. You got to come a little further south. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. But uh, so NASA news. We were talking about this earlier. That asteroid. If you've not heard about it, uh, there's this asteroid that's within you know Earth's grasp, I guess, and. Within grass, we're talking like 200 million miles, which that's just a uh, hop, skip, and a jump. <laughs> you know, incomprehensible distance. I I can't even comprehend that. But uh, they they launched this probe satellite uh, asteroid chaser. We'll call it. It's called Osiris, and uh, what its mission is? It's to chase down this asteroid, and it's going to actually. Not really land on it, but it's got a probe, and it's going to stick its probe in the asteroid and gather some samples from this asteroid. And like a Friday night. Like, like a Friday night. And what they're hoping is that this material that they get from this, this asteroid, uh, it's going to contain molecular precursors to life in Earth's oceans. 
So they're hoping that by getting the DNA, I guess, from this this asteroid, it's going to be able to help tell them more about Earth, which I don't know how it's going to tell them more about Earth when it's from somewhere we don't even know where it's from. So, I mean, they're scientists. They know more than I do. (laughs) Well, it's not from Earth, so they're not going to find any precursors, ocean stuff on it. I mean, just common sense would tell you that, right? Yeah. Um, and you can't abandon common sense when you're talking about science. And the asteroid, I think they're calling it Bennu, B-E-N-N-U, says it contains material from early solar systems, or from, from the early solar system. So maybe, you know, that if the Big Bang Theory holds true, then that's, you know, we all came from that, according to the, the Big okay. Bang Theory. Well, there is no such thing as a Big Bang, so... How do you know? How do you know there's no such thing as a Big Bang? Well, because... Again, you have to science and logic have to go hand in hand. It's impossible. Otherwise, you're just doing random theories. Which the Big Bang, I'll remind everybody, is a theory, and it's a stupid theory to to begin with because nothing has never come or something has never come from nothing ever. Something came from somewhere, but there had to be some some something. Chicken or the egg, baby. What we got? You get into that chicken and the egg. Chicken, fully grown. (laughs) <laughs> chicken or the egg uh, so. it was all created well maybe this will have the and, the material on it that'll you know guide us to that the answer to that question who knows but i'm glad that they're doing it because you don't you don't find out answers unless you ask questions and you know you you research and follow up answers right there what are you what are you showing me genesis it's, 1 1 all answers <laughs> genesis you saw the bible you holding up the bible there genesis 1 1 gives you all the answers so there's more on that. If you guys want to read more about this, you can go Google it, nasa.gov. Uh, you can get up-to-date information on it there, pictures, whatnot. But, you know, I think it's pretty amazing that we can send probes out that far, you know, send our technology out 200 million miles. And, you know, it's like, you know, I like archaeology also. You know, it's like it's like a deep space well, here's, archaeological here's mission, you know. It's amazing not that we can just send it there but it sends stuff back yeah like we bring you can bring it back you retrieve That's it the amazing part to me yeah this sucker yeah. is scooping That's it up awesome. and it's going to come back home i mean that's the goal in the yeah and then the detailed photos that we get from a lot of these planets or from you know a lot of these uh spacecraft um of these the planets is just incredible yeah like detailed images of planets that are millions and millions of miles away it's crazy yeah. And just think, though, I mean, be able to be able to see machinery up like that and then to start mining these materials that are on these asteroids or these other planets, you know, bring them back here. And then, I mean, there's no telling what kind of, you know, improvements that we're going to be able to make to uh, our homes, uh, medicines, our guns. <laughs> I mean, let's say this is a gun podcast. I mean, I'm thinking, what kind of cool weaponry can we make out of this? You know, what kind of new... New knife, you know, what kind of cool knife can we make out of this? You know, my next Skinner is going to be coming from that rock right there, maybe. Which is I'll make a I'll make a prediction. All right. I'll make a prediction about what they're going to find. All right. Rocks. Rocks? <laughs> they're going to find You don't think they're going to find minerals. minerals? Maybe some new metals? Yeah. Some different That's kind of rocks metals? rocks are. Yeah? I don't know. It's interesting. I mean, it'd be cool if they found some heavy metal. There is a company that makes... That has made some firearms from meteorites. Uh, I can't remember the name of the company, but we had Matt Dorito. I remember that. Yeah, Matt Dorito, who is with the band Pop Evil. You are you familiar with Pop Evil? Uh, I think I've heard of them because of you, maybe. Yeah. So Matt is like the guitarist or bassist for Pop Evil, but he also worked for this firearms company. I can't remember which company it was now, but they were making firearms from meteorites, and they were, you know, they were like. $22,000 for you know, a pistol or something like that. But they look pretty cool. Man, maybe we'll market something like that and get some sand from the beach. I'm telling you, know. George could make it happen, man. George <laughs> could make it happen. So that does it for, unless you've got any more heroes, that's where I was going to leave it, right there. Um, With their jack wagons and lead head brigade heroes. I think that's it. I mean, I've got a bunch of heroes, but no, uh, we can move on. Okay. I mean, if you got one in particular you want to shout out, let's shout them out. Um, Let's give creds where creds are due, man. Well, as always, United States military yeah. and our 
our uh, honorable law enforcement across the country, um, you know, for law enforcement, especially for putting up what they've been putting up with uh, the last uh, few years. So, you know, support your local law enforcement. You're uh, 99.9% good guys. So don't Absolutely. forget that. Yeah. Doing good. Doing good stuff out there in our <clears throat> communities. Yep. And so, they're being, they're having their hands tied and stuff too, which is a shame, but uh, keep me in your prayers. Yep. Keith likes everything about the great outdoors. He's a lot like us. Whether we're bow hunting in the back country or plinking in the backyard, we want to enjoy each experience to the fullest. Keltec's 22 caliber P17 is Heath's go-to pistol for a good time on the range, on the trail, and anywhere in between. Weighing in at only 14 ounces with a full magazine, its compact size makes it easy to conceal or tuck away in a small pack, pocket, or space. It comes out of the box ready with a fiber optic front sight, a threaded barrel, a Picatinny rail, and a price point for any budget. With three 16-round magazines, it's ready for hours of pure, unadulterated enjoyment. It's easy, it's affordable, it's accurate, and it's a damn sweet marvel of plinking innovation. The Keltec P17. It's more bang for less buck. So we're going to move on. That to uh, wrap up the Jack Wagon Train and Lead Head Brigade Heroes. And we want to talk Keltec Sub CQB now. Yeah. With, with Chad Enos, ladies and gentlemen. The good stuff. So before we, before we get into that, Chad, for our new listeners to the show, tell them a little bit about Chad Enos. <laughs> Uh, I think it's time for an, a, a new updated well, biography. We haven't done one on you in a while. Yeah, well, there's not much to tell. Um, <clears throat> I started here at Caltech uh, 11 years ago, coming up on 11 years ago, and I uh, started as an assembler, worked my way through the uh, test fire range, then went into the rifle repair, then in, in, went into pistol repair, and then went into all repairs. Then I went to customer service, and then I landed in marketing, and that's what I've been doing the last uh, about six years or so. Yeah, so the better half of your time there, you've been in the the, the marketing side of things, and uh, I'm sure yeah, we didn't have one. Before. You didn't have one before? No, we didn't have a marketing department per se. We did marketing, obviously, but we just we had hired out, uh, you know, companies to do it for us, and it was pretty meager. Um, right. So they sort of started the marketing department. With myself and Matt Stanick, uh, who's our videographer, and he does a lot. He has a bunch of other hats he wears here too. Uh, so yeah, it, it's been, you know, it's been six or seven years now. We've been plugging away at this thing, and so just we're, to uh, add learning some, as we go, add some perspective to it. So when you first started there, what uh, what guns was Keltec manufacturing at that time? Which guns were they manufacturing? Uh, the most recent gun, or the most popular recent gun was the i think the rfb our 308 bullpup um was really like our flagship gun at the time that was 11 years and ago and then um wow yeah so the the ks the ksg and the pmr30 basically came out at the same time ksg is our 12 gauge pump action shotgun the pmr30 is our 22 magnum semi-auto pistol uh those came in right i mean right after i started working here um in fact, I remember George coming down to the range the very first time with, he had a soft case, and in the soft case was what we now know as the KSG. At the time, we called it the vacuum cleaner. That that was the <laughs> little code name or whatever around here yeah. in the in the engineering department. But yeah, since I was working in the test fire range at the time, he brought it down there and he pulled it out of the case, and I was the only guy down there, and he kind of you know, stuck his head in the window and like waved at me to come into the range. And I came into the range and he, so he could let me see it, you know, see what he was working on. Yeah. And that was, you can imagine if, I don't know if anybody listening remembers their first time seeing a KSG. It's, it's pretty wild, you know? So I had that same experience, uh, as everybody else, you know, when he came down there with that thing and pulled it out of the bag, I was like, what in the heck is that? And I could tell by the bore it was, you know, shotgun, yeah. but I didn't know at all how it worked or, what it was i thought maybe and it looked like a class three weapon because it's so short um so yeah that was you know it was back in the day when we very first started developing the uh the ksg and then the pmr30 was right on its heels so that's how long i've been here um and those were the really the two coolest things and kind of still are um you know to date they're our biggest sellers but we do have some other some newer products coming up that are uh 
not going to sideline those guns uh, as far as popularity, but they'll be right there with it. Yeah. yeah from, from what I know, yeah, definitely. And, you know, the kel Sub-2000 uh, in it, you know, of itself is, is one of your most popular, I would say, also, and, you know, one of the more innovative ones. It really is. And the weird thing is the Sub-2000 didn't even really start to take off um, until, uh, until, I don't know, I mean, it, it was always somewhat popular, but nobody really knew what it was. Uh, it was popular among kel customers, people that knew who we were. Right. But back even when I started just 11 years ago, I mean, we weren't really quite on the map yet, you know. Um, and the Sub-2000, so, you know, by default, the Sub-2000 wasn't really all that popular either. But, you know, after I started here, um, and then especially leading up to, um, you know, the Obama elections and things like that, it, you know, things started to pick up. But the, the Sub-2K really uh, took off, uh, especially when the second gen came out, when we introduced that. Um, yeah. It really became a big hit. But yeah, you're right. That's that's another one of our big our big sellers too. Yeah, and and you've taken it to the next step. You know, you've innovated it even more and you guys have come out with the CQB, uh, which for our listeners who haven't heard about it, uh, we talked about it during this past shot show, uh, late last I guess it'd be last year's or no this year's shot show. It's, we're still in this year. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I was used by that too. It seems a long, like it was two years ago, but I know when I ask people, "Are you going to Shot Show this year?" They're like, "We already went." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, next year. <laughs> and uh, the the CQB is an integrally suppressed sub two thousand, and I got to get, it is. get yeah get some hands on with it. Got to shoot it, and I mean, it was it was a delight, man. It was everything that I was hoping it would be, and. Uh, I can't wait to get one, but I'm um, just like everybody else. Let's talk about the design of the the sub 2000 CQB in relation to you know your your base platform, the sub 2000, the standard one. Uh, yeah, so the the standard sub 2000 has a 16 inch barrel. It folds in half. Uh, that's the you know the uh, the coolest um, attribute of that gun. It actually folds in half. Um, we make a multi-mag variant that takes 10 different magazines, and we also make the, the Glock variants, which um, are mo the most popular ones because Glock magazines are everywhere, and you can get the 33-round mags, et cetera, et cetera, uh, in 9mm and, uh, you know, whatever, 30 round and 40 cal. Um, so we do make it in 9mm and 40 caliber. The sub-CQB, however, uh, as of now anyway, it, it only takes Glock 17 mags, um, and it's uh, the 9mm. And it has, it technically has a, and I'm using technically with you know, quotes. air quotes. Yeah. Uh, it has a 16 inch barrel and four, four and a quarter inches of it are rifled. And the rest of it is a K baffles. Okay. Uh, and then it obviously has a, a sleeve over it. The cool thing about the sleeve is it rotates. So you can actually keep your optic on there. Um, the outer barrel shroud has pick rail, a section on top and bottom. And you uh, can rotate 90 degrees and still fold the gun up with your optic on there. Nice. Uh, so that's a pretty cool feature. So you're getting a suppressor with a single tack stamp, uh, and you get the ability to add uh, an optic to the gun while still being able to, uh, you know, fold the thing. So it's pretty neat. Um, and there's a couple other little bells and whistles in it. It comes with a brass bolt, um, which kind of helps with uh, mitigate recoil. Um, anytime you add a suppressor, it's going to add a little more back pressure. So it actually shoots nicer than the original sub 2000 Very smooth, without yeah. a suppressor. So. I mean, the, the original one yeah, is smooth anyway. It, it is. Yeah. It's not a rough shooter but at this all. This one, uh, it's, yeah, I've got, um, I need to post it on our website, but I've got some on my YouTube channel. I've got a, some video shooting it, uh, both at targets and into the dirt. And you can really hear how quiet it is. I was running the 165 grain, uh, freedom munitions, hush ammo. But any subsonic ammo out of that thing is is pretty much Hollywood quiet. So it's pretty neat. It's a pretty neat gun. Yeah. And the fact that you can fold a suppressed nine millimeter rifle is pretty neat. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and and the fact that it's integrally suppressed, where you know you don't you don't have a taking it on and off kind of thing. You know, it's it's built into it. It's part of it's yeah. permanent. You know, kind of thing. So uh, I really. Yeah. So it's a single tax stamp. The cool thing about that, though, is there's a, there's an end cap on it, and you simply just screw the end cap off, and you can dump all the baffles out and clean the whole thing out. Yeah, I, I was going to get into and that and talk about 
how user serviceable it was. So there you go. Yeah, it's as easy as it gets. So you can actually take your suppressor completely apart and put it back together, and it's uh, a matter of a cap. So there's no hope, there's no you know extra tools. It's not a pain in the butt to do. Uh, super simple. Yeah. And but you got to keep in mind that the the sub two thousand is a straight blowback design, uh, so it doesn't really get dirty anyway. Um, you know right. the action action area is the area that's going to get uh you know most of the dirt and stuff and I, uh, to be honest with you i very rarely clean any of my sub 2000s because you really don't need to Mm-mm. you know it's, i swipe the board once in a while when they're stored other than that i get the spray it, so. the spray you know like cop or whatever and just give it a bath yeah. in that and you know let it drip and then wipe it down and um, i'll occasionally take mine apart yeah. and you know put it back together but yeah uh, like you said, it doesn't really get yeah, the that biggest dirty. thing is, yeah, cleaning the recoil spring is, you know, really the only thing you actually really need to clean on the thing. Um, you know, the rest of it sort of just kind of cleans itself because of the design. But um, and even that, you know, like I said, I rarely pull it apart. And when I do, yeah. there's really not much to do but wipe it off, oil it back up. <laughs> so on the the All rail, that. is it a M lock rail? Is that what it is? No, it's Picatinny both on top and bottom. Um, in order to do, I asked them about that, if they could do M lock on the sides of it, yeah. but in order to do that, the, um, the actual, uh, sleeve that goes over the baffles would be huge in diameter. Yeah. Um, because you'd have to, you'd have to build it out, um, probably another inch or so in diameter in able, in, in order to put the M lock slots on there. So they just did a pick rail on top and bottom for this, you know, first generation, first generation. Um, right. So it, First generation, there's you yeah. can't do side mounts at this point. No, no. Um, but if, I wish I had mine with me to show you uh, so I could explain it. But um, on most of my guns anyway, since I'm so used to our bullpups that don't – that before the M-Lock hand guards came out, we didn't really have options to mount stuff on the sides. So I'm, I'm so used to just putting everything automatically on a 45-degree mount. So uh, all, of, all my guns have a 45-degree mount with a flashlight sure. attached to them. So. Sure. And then anything else, I just put on the bottom or top. So uh, yeah, you don't really, really need to put a lot I mean, on it anyway. You know? No, I mean, I you know I always recommend a quality light, uh, and then a quality optic, and that's really all you need. Yeah, and I, I know a lot of trainers now are going to the handheld light training instead of the weapon mounted light. I mean, there's still some that do the weapon mounted lights. But. Yeah, I I pretty much have a light um, both in my pocket and on all my weapons. There you go, prepared. That's that's his. Uh, you don't have to use it. Being you don't have to use it. Taking self ownership, self determination, and individual responsibility right there. Good job. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's nice to have though, in case you do I need to it. use it. Definitely. So so now r- right now it's a nine millimeter Glock mags. Um, how are the sights? Are they your t- your standard um, sub two thousand sights? There's no sights on it. Okay. It comes without sights, so it comes. Optics ready. So you don't have that pop-up rear <clears throat> sight? No. Um, in, in place of that is the locking tab for the rotating forend. Okay, good. So where, you, where your rear sight would be, where it folds, mm-hmm. there's a locking tab there. So you just flip up the locking tab, you rotate it out of the way, and then you can fold the gun up. Have you ran any irons on it? I have not, but it's definitely uh, a good enough sight radius. for. I mean, it's it'd be basically if you put... a. Uh, you know, some inbus on there or something, it'd be the same sight radius you would get um, out of a normal sub-2000. So yeah. uh, for anybody that has a normal a normal sub-2000, um, you, you, then you know that they're pretty darn accurate out to 100 yards, uh, you know, 100 yards at plus yeah. with just the iron sights. So. Yeah, and I haven't had any problems with, uh, with mine. Now, the Gen 1, I modified my Gen 1, and I, uh, I put one of those those rotating, uh, I can't remember the name of the company that makes those, but it does. Redline Precision. Yes, Redline Precision. I put one of the, their hand guards on there and um, added one of their uh, their front sights. But, I, you know, I just run it with a laser now too. But basically what Redline Precision had made, you know, the aftermarket accessory, that's what the new CQB is doing. So you're able to it's actually unlock long, the nut. It's actually longer, so. Yeah, no, the, the CQB uh, is a lot easier to deploy and fold than the than the rotating handguard you have, uh-huh. um, and uh-huh. also the pick the pick rail goes all the way out uh, to the muzzle end of the gun, 
So you get all that sight radius. Um, so it would be just the same as having your normal iron sights on your sub 2000. Nice. Whereas if you nice. put pick rail or excuse me, if you were to put, um, a sight on the red line precision rotating foreign, it's going to shorten your sight radius by about three and a half inches. Yeah. So, well, they made a, uh, an aftermarket yeah. one because, because when you put that on, you had to destroy the factory front post sight basically to get it off on the first gen. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. they made the a, have to, a replacement. Yeah. That. Yeah. yeah. You got one right there. Yeah. This is, this is second gen though. You don't have to, your site comes off, so you don't have to destroy it. <laughs> That's a gen two. Yeah. So I've got my gen two right here. There you go. Yeah. But I haven't, I haven't done anything to it. I've done no modifications to it whatsoever. Cause I just, uh, it's got a fancy paint job. Except for that. I mean, I always got to put some sort of paint on there. That's just me. <laughs> I put a, a hydro dipped it with um, skulls. I've got a skull pattern on it. But uh, I liked it. I mean, just right out of the box when I took this thing out and started shooting it. I mean, I was holes in holes at 25, backed up to 50, was holes in holes. You know, took it out a little bit further. And, I mean, it was still just dead nuts accurate. And I was like, I don't need to do anything to this. I'm not touching it. You guys had made the adjustable... <laughs> But stock to it, you know, you did that with the Gen 2. Is that the same with the CQB? Yep. Do you still have the adjustable stock on that? It does. Everything from the hinge back is is a normal sub-2000. Okay. With the exception of the bolt, uh, the bolt's a brass bolt. So. And why? And you went, you went with the brass bolt because, <laughs> say again, why? It slows the action down. Yeah, it slows the action down a little bit and uh, kind of tames the, uh, that felt recoil. So... What's it the, shoots a little smoother. And what's the durability of the brass versus the uh, the aluminum? Uh, it's it's fine. It's been uh, mine has no markings on it whatsoever, so it works fine. Yeah. So it's not the actual bolt head itself. Mm -hmm. It's the bolt. Uh, you know, in your sub two thousand, if you were to take it apart and clean it, um, <laughs> the uh, bolt is in two pieces. So the the business end um, with your firing pin extractor. Um, is is uh, steel, and then the the actual bolt uh, behind it, all the mass behind it, is a big old piece of brass. So gotcha. it doesn't really impact anything, and they lock together. Um, and where they're locked together, there's no play in that thing, so it doesn't it doesn't beat itself up. Right. Very good. So uh, these are out, and they are available now in retailers if you can find them. Or yeah, we started ship we started shipping them about a month ago, and I know that. Um, uh, silencer shop, silencershop.com. We sent them, um, we sent them a bunch, uh, but they don't have them available yet on their website. So I'm assuming that they're just waiting for government paperwork, mm. <laughs> uh, to be able to start advertising and selling them. But we did send a bunch there and, uh, we've sent, um, just as many, if not more to a lot of, uh, class three, di <coughs> um, retailers around the country. So, gotcha. and distributors. So yeah, we're we're building them and shipping them out. Um, and again, it's a you know it's a single tax stamp item, but it is a tax stamp item. So um, those typically tend to sell uh, a lot slower sure. than you know anything else you can just sell out of forty four seventy three for. So, right now, um, but we're cracking them out. What's the MSRP on these? MSRP I want to say is nine ninety five. Let me look that up real quick. Okay. Okay. Um, so I don't know what they will retail for in a store. Sorry, I didn't even know my own website. <laughs> um, yeah, nine ninety five is what the MSRP is. Um, you know, typically under normal circumstances, uh, firearms are about a uh, hundred and fifty. Depends, hundred and fifty bucks less. Sometimes even two hundred dollars less um, at a gun shop than what you would, what the MSRP is. Yeah. Um, I know there's a lot yeah. of people laughing at that right now because of the way things are and all the panic buying that's going on. Things are almost well, you, double. The you price. did preface it by saying normal. <laughs> this this is not normal. Yeah, under normal circumstances. Yeah. yeah. And you know you can go to Keltec Keltecweapons dot com K E L T E C weapons plural dot com um, and you can get all the specs and and you know get all the cool nomenclature for this. Uh, the sub 2000 CQB and all the rest of our guns too. Yeah. So, and then, you know, of course the tax stamp, like Chad said, you're going to have to, to do the, um, the form. What form is that you got to 
fill out for the form four, I think. Yeah, and um, you know, there's a waiting period involved with that. But I mean, if you well, form you, one and then you get form four. I don't know. But you look at you know, if, it's been so long since I. I yeah, I the regular one. sub two thousand. What does a regular sub two thousand typically sell for? Like three hundred, four hundred. Yeah, somewhere between three fifty and four hundred bucks at a gun shop. Yeah, and then of course if you were to buy a can, I mean, you know, outside mm -hmm. of that, you add that on. So I mean, yeah. it's it's not it's not an unreasonable price at all. No, you? not at all. Um, and if we could like get I rid said, of the we, NFA, then you wouldn't have to pay that two hundred dollar tax stamp. <laughs> I exactly you took the words right out of my mouth. Yeah, <laughs> but unfortunately at this we point need to repeal you that. Yeah. Well, very good. So, and I'm sure, uh, have you sent these out to some of your uh, testers, evaluators, or videos out yet of these people shooting, shooting these? I mean, I've got one that we did a shot show, but that's it. Yeah, we haven't we haven't really sent any out. Um, just that you know, because of it's it's a class three kind of thing, and people really don't want to deal with that paperwork. So, yeah. it's kind of hard to send T and E, you know, T and E class three weapons out. Um, it's not impossible. I mean, there's certain people out there that could you know, um, they could take them in and then, you know, take them out to the range because they're a representative of their gun shop, et cetera, et cetera. But, um, yeah, we just haven't had, we haven't had, uh, haven't done that yet. I've taken it to the range a lot and shot a lot of video. And, and, uh, like I said, I'll be posting that on our website here pretty soon. Cool. I'm sure you'll post that on uh, social media too, for our listeners that follow you guys on Facebook and Instagram. The yeah. Grams. In fact, I think I did, uh, on Facebook, I did put a video. I might have done on Instagram, too. Posted a video of me out there shooting it. Yeah. The yeah, only bad thing about uh, shooting it uh, at range day was, you know, it was just so loud there, you couldn't really appreciate how quiet it was. Right. Yeah, yeah. But um, and it, even on video, though, it's hard to tell. Um, you know, the reality is, you, yeah, I did post on Instagram. You got to get out there. You know, you got to get one and just take it out and shoot your own gun. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And, you know, you'll then you'll appreciate it. But it's it's literally Hollywood quiet. It's or awesome little, you know, awesome as things start quiet. to get back to normal when the uh, range days are going on again, you know, we have opportunities for you guys. I'm going to one next month, and I sent you guys some info on it, but I guess it was too short notice uh, down in Georgia. It's called Epic Shoot. It's hosted by the Big Daddy Outdoors. And I think we are going to that. We talked about that yesterday. So. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I think we're going to try to, to make it to that. Well, if you do, bring the CQB, and then we'll get some videos of it, because I'm, I'm going to he be headed it. down there. Definitely. Be down there for okay. me, up there for you. Yes. <laughs> In Georgia. Yeah, that'd be cool if you guys could come. That'd yes, be awesome. Sir. We're going to try to make it. Very cool. We were talking about it yesterday. So go check them out. Uh, more to come on the CQB. Uh, hopefully uh, next month I'll be able to get a little more hands-on with it there at uh, in Georgia. It's in Fleming, Georgia. The epic yeah, shoot. To, it's November thirteenth. Go to inst go to Instagram. Type in Keltec weapons and you'll see a video of me shooting it on there. Cool. And then I had yes, one sir. up for a while. I don't. It's probably still on Instagram. But uh, when we did the range day, but it's hard to really tell. But it's still, I mean, it looks the looks of this thing are just awesome. I mean, this is the way it should have looked to begin with. I really love it. <laughs> you remember when okay. we went to the Iraq vet? Uh, we didn't. It wasn't an Iraq vet shoot, but it was something that you and I uh, went to, and yeah. Peter Peter Palmer was there, and uh, I can't remember who else yeah, was yeah. there. Um, but it was just a little get together, and you'd brought some cool stuff, and uh, had the sub two thousand there, and we put a can on it while we were there, and we, you know we were kind of yeah. talking about it even way back then. Oh yeah, yep, yeah. And I ended up coming back from that trip. And uh, chopping my barrel down to nine inches and putting a silencer co on there. <laughs> nice. And when I did that, um, you know, got the tax stamp, the two tax stamps and all that for it and everything. And uh, when I did that, the engineer that designed this sub 2000 CQB um, was basically modeling the gun after what I'd, what I'd modified, you know, when I came home from that trip. Right. So that's funny right. that you say that. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember. We were actually, you and I were talking about that. Uh, a couple of months ago because I saw a video from that uh, and it was the, it was a RF, I think it was the RFB. It might've been an RDB, but it had wood. It had wood yeah, furniture. Yeah, the RDB. Um, yeah, the M43. The M43. Yep. I still have just wet dreams about that. Well, we're, we're still, we're, we're going to definitely be um, putting that gun out. I know everybody's probably laughing because it's been forever, but yeah, 
the biggest problem yeah. we've had with that is actually finding someone to stamp the receivers, believe it or not, because apparently that's a dying art. Really? Yeah. So, really? Yeah, we've been trying to resource that, and and there are we found people that can do it and do a quality job. It's just that uh, they can't do the quant- quantity that we need for it. So yeah. we're thinking about doing yeah. the gun as sort of a limited production release each year um, with a different finish um and then also maybe add some cool little bells and whistles in the in the box so you you know it's kind of different each year yeah so we're talking about doing but uh yeah we are we're definitely going to release that it really looked good with the wood furniture man especially since i've been doing this really does this ak corner and i saw that i was just like man that is so you know like eastern european kind of look to it It it's really cool very much especially remember had the matching bayonet yeah, <laughs> um, sheath on it and everything. Yeah, yeah, it was really so, cool. I think it would be very well received, but again, I think it's probably best in, like you said, like a limited edition kind of kind of thing, limited quantity. Because I don't yeah, think everybody yeah. would appreciate it as much as others. You're kind of a collector's. Yeah, 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 definitely. So that's what we're talking about doing. I mean, it's we talk about that gun, you know, probably once a week around here. So it's not dead. You know, it's not dead in the water. We're we're still working on it. Very cool. So I've got my uh, 17 RDB 17 uh, with the Defender furniture on it set up for hunting because I told you, you know, I'm going to take it out uh, for deer hunting season yeah. here. Starts the 23rd of November is when rifle starts here. Uh, but I've got it all set up, ready to go. It's just sitting over there just like, put me to work, Daddy. Put me to work. I can't, <laughs> I can't wait to unleash the hounds on that. Get thing. her done. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. So we'll talk more about. Uh, that when deer season gets here and i've bagged one or yeah, two with it looking forward to it. yeah it's going to be a good time so what about you and, then, and the uh, next year we'll s- no go ahead next year what next year we'll send you out with a grendel oh <laughs> you coming out with a grendel the, the old version six, the six five grendel conversion for your rdb yeah hell yeah that'd be great i've got a little experience with the yeah. grendel i've got a, a larue that they sent they sent me a six five grendel nice yeah. yeah, that's a great deer or a great hunting cartridge. Um, the, so there's there's been a lot of stuff that we wanted to uh, have released by now, um, but with uh, with the Rona and then you know all the outrage that's been sparked all over the U.S., it drove gun sales like to numbers that we've never seen in our industry, and uh, and so that kind of put the brakes on a lot of these. <clears throat> projects that we were hoping to have out by now we were going to be trying to release i think three new products or at least three uh before shot show this year but then all this stuff happened so um there's going to be a lot of a lot of hopefully if things do get back to normal um throughout next year we'll be releasing some uh some pretty neat options for you guys so just stay tuned nice. you know, stay more, with, stick with us uh more innovation coming from Caltech, definitely and uh, I like I like what uh, I'm seeing on some of the stuff that's going to be coming. So yeah, I know our listeners are going to be stoked about it too. It's going to be rad, dude. The cool thing about it is uh, most of the stuff is been. Let's see, I'm gonna think one, two. I think of five things off the top of my head, six things off the top of my head that that our customers have been asking for for years, and we've gotten around to those things and they're developed. We just right now are focused on production of existing products because we're right. trying to you know fulfill these right. orders with uh and we don't want to release stuff and focus on that and then you can't find a you know an rdb or an rfb or a ksg or whatever so we're we're building what we what we already have um but everything that everyone's asked for is pretty much uh, in the past the development stages so there's going to be a little we're going to be cram packed full of new products uh for 2021 and to come definitely and beyond 2021 and beyond yes as Chad yeah. sits in his spacecraft, <laughs> it's still <laughs> cracking me up. I'm gonna post those uh, those screenshots that I took. Those are gonna be hilarious. Uh, what else? Um, okay. Pistol wise, I um, mean, you guys, the the twenty twos that you came out with, the seventeen, and then uh, we just gave away one of your uh, competition pistols too recently in a, a big CP, giveaway. Yeah, CP thirty three. Yeah. yeah, that was the CP33, and then uh, we've got our our compact 22LR uh, P17, which and has been a hot seller too. 
it's uh, been very well received on the 17. Yes. Uh, it, and the price point is incredible. I mean, the, it's MSRP is 199. So, oh wow. Um, again, when things get back to normal and they're not three hundred dollars at gun shops, people will be able to go and pick up a couple. Yeah. We were hoping that this year um, people would be able to buy them like basically as <laughs> stocking stuffers for Christmas, like <laughs> you know, because it's it's such an inexpensive gun. It's a great training tool, and they're just super fun for even experienced shooters to just go out and plink and have a good time with and at that price point we you know in fact we talked about it last year and uh you know we talked about how it could be a you know stocking stuffer or whatever but yeah again the rona hit everybody got crazy and so gun sales went through the roof and now the whole industry is struggling to keep up with the demand and we're no exception obviously so yeah but we'll get back we'll get back to that and you'll be able to find it for cheap so these projects that you guys have coming so- and you know what people are asking for and requesting do you get a lot of requests for a semi-auto shotgun yeah we get that all the time uh unfortunately that won't be something that we're going to be offering here next year okay that's not on the top Um, five list but yeah and there's a reason uh for that because you know a gas operated shotgun is very difficult if it weren't everybody would have one everybody would have put one out by now um they tend to be uh, unreliable and, um, I mean, Benelli got it right, uh, doing their inertia system. And there's a couple others that, that do okay. Uh, but when you're talking about doing a, a bullpup shotgun with a gas system, it ends up being an enormous firearm. Mm-hmm. And you can see that with IWI's version of, of their gun. And there's yeah. a couple others, um, that are semi-auto as well. And they're just huge guns. So until we innovate some, you know, sort of, uh, slimline gas system for 12 gauge that can handle the the various loads um we'll probably just stick to building them building pump shotguns what about it's, other... not, it's not a no it's not the same. oh yeah 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 i mean you know how george is i mean george could come over tomorrow and say he's figured it out we don't know <laughs> like, i mean just by your answer alone you can tell that you guys are thinking about it so <laughs> you know it's oh yeah always it's on the drawing always. board definitely yeah uh, what about other gauges yeah. for shotguns for your ksg I got to keep my mouth shut. Okay. That's one of the things that's going to be the next year. I got you. Uh, and you're going to be, this, this thing is really cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. That's all I can say. It's awesome. All right. I won't dig. I won't, I won't uh, jeopardize you there. <laughs> uh, let's see. What else? Uh, what about nine millimeter pistols? Nine mil pistols. Yeah. We've got a really cool, uh, a really cool pistol coming too. Um, I, can't really say much about it other than to say uh, it's going to be a replacement for the P11, um, but with all the modern modern amenities of a you know polymer nine millimeter pistol. So okay. Without giving too much away, that's that's yeah. the platform. So um, we're not re you know reinventing the wheel on anything. It's basically just going to be our version of a really neat uh, um, you know polymer nine mil. Cool. So outside it's of very cool, outside of firearms, you know, there's there's some things that you guys uh, do as well. You, are you looking at anything outside of firearms as far as gear, kit, like accessories, accessories? Yeah. Oh wait, what'd you say? What kind of kit? I said gear, kit, accessories. You know, outside of the firearms oh, oh. themselves, because like you have, you've done knives before, kit. you've done um, flashlights, right. you've done you know some other things. Yeah, there's. There's been some accessories drawn up. Um, whether we'll actually make them or not, it, it remains to be seen because um, because of the industry right now. So we're not really putting any eggs in that basket uh, right now. We're just focused on production of the the stuff we already make. Um, and then once we get those orders knocked out, uh, who knows how long that's going to be. But once we get those knocked out and we have some breathing room, then we can start uh, working on some accessories and stuff, but right now we just want to get all the guns out we can. Sure. And sure. are are cans on your radar? Uh, well, yeah. The 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 can that's I uh, should have mentioned that before with the CQB, uh, the suppressor that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, integrated into that gun is actually our is it's our design. Uh, so it's our it's our suppressor. It's not you know an aftermarket company. Nobody's making them for us. We're making them here in house. Um, so obviously, yeah, we we're looking at uh, suppressors stuff as well. You've already got a, you've already got one. 
<laughs> so, I yeah. mean, it, yeah, yeah. Real, real, realistically, you've already got one. Yeah. So there's no reason why you couldn't make this it a standalone true. as well. Yeah. Well, very no, good, we man. No, we can. I mean, and, you know, we're not trying to get into, uh, you know, we're not trying to dive into a bunch of different markets. You know, we make guns and we're not going to pr- pretend to be something else. Um, you know, it's good for... Some co- some companies. I mean, we congratulate Sig. Uh, they've pretty much taken over everything. <laughs> I mean, I'm surprised they're not making cars yet. You know what I mean? So uh, don't put it past not, them. We're not that kind of company. Gunpowdered. Right. We're not that kind of company. Nope. Gunpowdered powered car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Sig Sour. The Sig Sour. So four wheel drive. Matt's leaving. Says later. All right, Matt. See you, buddy. <laughs> Hopefully we see him in Georgia. Hopefully we see yeah. him in Georgia. Okay. I guess he's out. Well, very good. Yeah, so yeah, no, he left. So some awesome things coming from Keltech, sponsors of the Talking Lead podcast. I'm very proud to have you guys on board. Uh, always impressed with the innovation and the technology that's coming out of Cocoa Beach, Florida there. We appreciate it. We always love being on the show. So um, – Make sure you guys go to their website, go to his Instagram page, check out those videos that he was talking about. And then, of course, you know, they're always dropping news. A lot of times, don't even tell me when you're dropping news and you'll drop it. So, <laughs> so you can't always rely on me uh, to give you the latest and greatest from Caltech, but we are the show for exclusives. So check back with us periodically on, on uh, Caltech. So as I mentioned, the epic shoot yes, coming sir. up November 13th in Fleming, Georgia. Uh, I'm going to be going down there. We got Bildo uh, coming from Michigan. He's going to ride down there with me too. Uh, Bildo with the Federal Law Enforcement Officers Association, and uh, Drew was going to go. I don't know if Drew's still going to go or not, but uh, Drew with uh, Century was going to go down there with me too. Uh, so that's going to be a good time. Hopefully, Caltech will be there, and we can get some videos with that uh, CQB, and maybe you bring that other thing too. Are you a- are you able to bring that out? When when is that event? It's uh, November thirteenth. Next month? Maybe. Okay. Maybe. That would be cool just to, you know, pull it out of the trunk, do a trunk viewing of it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we we should be close enough to sending them out the door that I could I could bring it to that. Okay. All right. Very good. Uh, and then we've got our full 30 release. We're going to have a big release party giveaway for uh, Talking Lead joining Full 30 Network. It's going to be the Talking Lead Full 30 nice. giveaway. Uh, that's coming up. We've we have several, several, several. We've got twenty plus companies so far, and more coming in that have committed to uh, prizes. We're going to do some very cool, like EDC type prize packages that we're going to put together for that. Don't know exactly how many we're going to do, but uh, we expect that we're going to have uh, definitely more than one um, winner. Uh, but we'll probably put together at least ten, you know, five to ten prize packages for that if not more, uh, more, a chicken dinner, more information. And it might be if Kentucky fried sponsors, you know, <laughs> we'll, we'll throw that in there. Um, as that information, uh, becomes, uh, more solid, we're going to, we're going to, you know, do social media release on it, email release. So we'll send you out all the information. We'll talk about it here on the show. Uh, you're not going to miss out on it. Don't worry. We'll give you plenty of notice and it's going to run for like two weeks. So you have plenty of time to sign up and have an opportunity uh, to take part in that giveaway. And then coming uh, February, our AK Concepts training course with 212 Training Group here in Nashville, Tennessee at Royal Range USA. February the 20 and 21st, we're doing a two-day AK course where uh, Jared with 212 Training is going to be instructing that. And um, you can go to his website now at 212training.com. And you can go ahead and sign up for those. It is available to sign up for. Uh, you have to have your own ammo, but if you don't have your ammo, Royal Range has ammo there, so you could buy it on site when you get there or make arrangements, call them ahead of time and have them put some back for you uh, to go ahead and secure that ammo. It's something like 1,000 rounds, 800 to 1,000 rounds, and then uh, you'll need some like handgun ammo too because we're practice transitions and things like that. So it's going to be a really... Really fun course. We're going to have giveaways at that class also. So we'll set up some sort of fun like shooting competitions in between breaks and uh, students will have the opportunity to win uh, some cool prizes. And uh, we're going to have the AK Corner apparel there too. So each 
class member is going to get a Talking Lead AK Corner T-shirt, too, from Factory 47. So that's going to be cool. And then I'm pretty sure we're going to have, like, meals, uh, like your lunch or whatever provided, too. So you're going to get a lot for the value of the class there. So I'm sure you go and sign up. I think it's only, like, $300 a day to do that, too. So make sure you go uh, sign up for that. Uh, oh, and we're going to have some some guests as well. Some, um, uh, how do I say it? Personalities, Chad, would you say? Well, sure. We'll have Talent. some gun industry personalities there. Um, so, the, you know, you never know who's going to show up for a talking lead class. <laughs> but that's, yeah. in, that's in February, so you got plenty of time to sign up. But go ahead and do it now because there's only 20 slots available. And I think, like, you know, 10 of them have already, and we just dropped it the other day. I think 10 of them are already, half of them are already sold out. So hurry, hurry. Get her uh, done. Chad, any parting words for the Leadheads? Now's the time. Do, you know, I know ammo is expensive, but you can't stop your training. So uh, if you can't take a class like that, you know, at least be out at the range, take a, you know, a box of ammo a month, which isn't much, and just make the most of it. Get out there and, and keep your training, especially now. The world ain't getting any safer. So, uh, you know, don't, uh, don't, don't slack on your, your training. training. Yeah, absolutely. Train, 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 train. That's what we talk about here. And you can do it with a professional February 20th to 21st uh, in Nashville at Royal Range. There you go. Uh, and like you said, the ammo. You know, ammo is all... tough. Uh, call Royal Range and, like yeah. I said, go ahead and secure your ammo if you don't already have some ammo. And you don't have to worry about yeah. shipping it or bringing it with you or whatever. It'll be there waiting on you. And the thing about those classes that's really cool is that you're not, you're not just going through the motions. You're actually pushing yourself and you're doing it with a bunch of other people. And so, uh, it's just fun. Like it can get really, really fun. And uh, this is going to be classes, so. even funner because it's with a bunch of lead heads. You know, a bunch of you listeners are going to be taking <laughs> yeah, this class. I, yeah. So you got, you're already, it's already a bunch of people that are like-minded. You're just going to be out there having a good time. That's right. Absolutely. And you can and ask some of the cool. St- yeah. You can ask some of the participants that took part in our last one that we did with Pincus there in Nashville. We did some giveaways and did some fun things there too. And they, they had a good time. Shenanigans. Shenanigans. You know, when I when I'm around, shenanigans happen. Chad, <laughs> I'm a shenanigan <laughs> instigator. I instigate <laughs> shenanigans. A shen instigator. So I was gonna show you. I got um I got my can out of jail the other day. So oh, I got nice. I got the Atlas Defense um Atlas. It's called the Atlas. So it's a 300 Win Mag rated uh, suppressor. Is that a 30 cal can. Uh, yeah, 30 cal can. It'll go up to 300 wind mag, and I can go down to 5.56 five, with it. I've got it on a 300 blackout nice. right now. Oh, nice. On a 300 blackout cool. SBR. So sexy. Sexy, sexy. But I want to put it on the uh, the RDB. So i got to get a uh, an adapter to put on there. But not till after hunting season okay. because I've got it dialed in for hunting season, so I can't touch it until after then. <laughs> I don't want to jack up my, my sights I got on it. So, uh, anything go. else? Have we talked about everything? Everything we need to talk about, Keltec wise? I think so, man. Okay. Very good. Yeah. It's just uh, all we got to do is survive the rest of 2020, man. <laughs> so, survival is key, uh, especially with this hurricane, this election coming up. It's about uh, ready to hit us. Uh, make sure you go and support all those companies that make this show possible Keltec Weapons, KeltecWeapons.com. Hey. Yeah. yeah. And we need all you gun owners out there to vote. Go vote. Don't forget to vote. Don't think this thing's a slam dunk. Definitely get out there and vote. And uh, make sure you, uh, you're researched on your local politicians and uh, vote accordingly. Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's the, uh, that, that can do the most harm or the most good is your local politicians. So be very Absolutely. alert and aware of who you're electing. Yep. It's not just about the presidential election. It's about your community as well. So make sure you uh, you get it all sorted out and then, and then go vote. Yeah. And prime examples of that are, I mean, you look at what happened in, you know, in Washington, in Portland, in Oregon, you know, those local, yeah. those local leaders there really failed their, their community. So, uh, you know, it all depends on who you put in locally. And they're still failing. <laughs> still. Chicago. Still. Yeah. yeah. New York, still, <laughs> but yeah. uh, definitely mean, vote, 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 vote. You, Go ahead. You're one election away from 
possibly having decades of just chaos in your own city. So, yeah, one election you know, away from communism. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But you you also help by supporting those that support this show. So cast your vote for Caltech. You cast your vote for Caltech by going to your local retailer and getting on that waiting list for this sub CQB, for the RDB, for the P17, for the CP33. They may not be there, but get on the list. KS7. You get the KS7. KSG. Yeah. Sub 2000. RDB, yeah. RFBs. I mean, you guys have a, a yes. slew. Are you still making the PLR16s? We are. Yep. So I've got I've We're got one of those. Everything. You've seen mine kitted out. That's the one that I put a brace on. Uh, I, I braced yeah, my PLR so cool. sixteen, and it oh man, it is so fun to shoot too. I love it. <laughs> Fioki ammo. Go and support Fioki. Show them some love on their social media, on their uh, website, and then of course buying their ammo when it's available. Uh, if you can find it, buy it. It's good stuff. Uh, twelve yep. gauge. They got some really good twelve gauge. For uh, pheasant hunting, bird hunting, and then of course they've got some good uh, buckshot too. And uh, I've been running some of that buckshot. They've got excellent. Yeah, go ahead. Excellent slug. We run their slugs in competition. They're great. Yeah. So go check them out, Fioki. Uh, Mission First Tactical. Good buddy David Edelman over there. Uh, they're going to be taking part in this yeah. this giveaway that we're going to be doing. And uh, we got a discount code for you for there. You use the Leadhead. Discount code, all lowercase, just leadhead, one word. You get 20% off uh, anything there on their website. And, of course, that's where you can go and get the Talking Lead dump trays and tactical wallets that they're doing exclusively there at Mission First Tactical. So uh, get leadheaded up with your dump tray and your tactical wallets there. Mission First Tactical. And then Modern Spartan Systems just relaunched their website. They got a new website up, and you can use the code... TLCP to get 15% discount and they're going to donate 15% to Camp Patriot. Uh, it's an amazing uh, veterans organization. I guess uh, they deal with more of the wounded side and they take them out in the outdoors. They do hunting, they do 4x4, they do uh, fishing, just you name it, outdoors. They get them out, get them active, get them off the couch and uh, it helps, helps cut down on that 22 suicides a day average is what they call it. I think it's a lot more than that, the suicide rate for our men and women in service. Of course, they don't even factor in the, the law enforcement and EMTs and uh, fire department in those stats. Those aren't even figured in those stats. Right. So great organization by buying Modern Spartan Systems products that you're going to be helping out, and you're going to get 15% off there. And, uh, TBT engine oil additive, maybe. I just I just did a lot of work on the lead sled. Um uh, and, oh yeah, uh, oh yeah. I, I fixed some wipers. I fixed some door handles that were broke. I just been doing some little knickknack things. I've been putting off. You know, with this COVID downtime, I was like, hey, I, I take care of some of these projects. But you know, over three hundred twenty thousand miles on that bad boy. Still, still trucking. Wow. I'm, I'm going to drive it down to Georgia. Uh, if Chad will ever invite me down to Cocoa Beach, I'll drive it down to Cocoa Beach. Um, You're always invited, man. Do a do a tour of uh, Caltech, maybe. Do I got to wear a mask? Heck yeah. <laughs> no. Bring the sled down here. The old lead sled. It's due for a rewrap. I need to rewrap it. So we need to, need to work on that. All right. So as Chad said, leadheads, make sure you go cast that vote. And next episode, next three or four episodes, I'll tell you, we're going to do kind of like a book series. We're going to have several different authors on. Uh, so be looking forward uh, to those coming up. Uh, but until then... As always, Leadheads, keep your loved ones close. Keep your firearms closer. And make sure your vote counts. Yes, sir.